That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Vanquish, the latest film directed by George Gallo, which will be released in theaters April 16th, 2020, and shortly after 2021, and shortly afterwards on April 20th, 2021, on demand, courtesy of Lionsgate and Grindstone Entertainment Group. Has this director done anything else I would know? Uh, okay, well, George Gallo's been around for a long while. Um, previously, he started as a screenwriter. He wrote um, Wise Guys, a Brian De Palma film from the late 80s with Danny DeVito and Joe Piscopo, um, and as well as the uh, highly rated Midnight Run starring Charles Grodin and Robert De Niro, which I can attest is a good film. Uh, he is also credited with, he has a story credit for Bad Boys with oh. Martin Lawrence and Will okay. Smith. Uh, and I think that he, on each subsequent film and those sequels and the upcoming Bad Boys 4, he has, uh, based on character's credit. So I think he gets a lot of cash from that. But uh, he has been directing uh, quite a few films. Uh, this will be his first, or his third time working with Morgan Freeman, I believe, after The Poison Rose with John Travolta and Brendan Fraser in 2019. Uh, which is a period piece, neo-noir, uh, and last year's The Comeback Trail, which also featured Tommy Lee Jones and Robert De Niro. Okay. Vanquish. The story is Morgan Freeman plays a man named Damon. Damon is like a retired police commissioner, mm -hmm. but he's retired because he was injured uh, in the line of duty. So he was shot, you know, he's paralyzed and in a motorized wheelchair. We find out Damon was corrupt. He, with a group of other law enforcement agents, were skimming money from different entities, like strip club owners, bar owners, like a union, some workers union. Um, uh, there was one other thing I think they were... Because like a, like a priest, well, the gay bar, and then there's like a priest, so I don't know if they were taking money from churches. But anyway... Damon has made a ton of money. He lives in this enormous mansion. We find out that he wants to help a young woman he knows and her daughter. And the young woman is played by Ruby Rose. Mm -hmm. Her character's name is Victoria. Mm -hmm. So we find her coming to visit Damon. And he's like, I have a job for you to do. What do you want me to do? I want you to do that thing you used to do. So we find out that she used to be a courier. Mm -hmm. which is like someone who would run drugs and money between, you know, nefarious groups. I don't know. Yeah, she, but it also sounds like she was an assassin and was known in Russia. And, she was. She worked for Russians. Mm -hmm. Okay. Damon somehow kidnaps her daughter. Mm -hmm. Like, while she's in the house. Like, they're both in the house. All, well, all three of them are in the house, and then all of a sudden the daughter's missing. Well, she goes, thanks, but no thanks. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go grab my kid. And she goes in the room, and there's just a butcher knife on the floor. Yeah. And he's got, like, video on his phone that says, if you don't do what I ask, you'll never find her. So <laughs> like, he clearly says, she's in the house. Yeah, so he says, I need you to go make five runs. And after you make the five runs, you can have your daughter back. So she goes on the first run. To collect money. That's her job is to get the money and come back. Money. So she goes, gets the money. It doesn't go well and she kills everyone. Mm -hmm. Comes back. Well, and it turns out that, that the man at that organization was involved with the death of her brother? Yes. Okay. Who was also a courier. So we find out that, yes, she has a brother who was killed who did the same thing she did. They kind of worked together for some time. So this lady does five runs. Like... Goes, gets the money, kills everyone, comes back, does it five times. There's more bitchy, there's bitchy dialogue in between each of those. and We'll get into the okay. whatever particulars, but yes, she does all five. She finally gets back after the fifth, and Damon says, gotcha, I was doing this for you. You ended up killing all of your enemies. It's all for you, if you really want it. Uh, you end up killing all your enemies, and all of this money that you collected is yours. Now get out of here and have a good life with your daughter. We also find out the daughter is ill and needs medical treatment. Yes, so this was a way for her to pay for it because you know, ex-couriers don't have medical insurance, so. And the Affordable Care Act, I guess, doesn't exist. But anyway, Damon knows that there will be retaliation against him. However, he says he's he's tired, He's he wants to just be done with it. So, like, the big bosses of all these entities who got shot up and their money taken show up at Damon's house to kill him. 
and they all come into the foyer and Damon's the looking foyer. down at them <laughs> and he ignites um or what do you call it? detonates a bomb mm-hmm. and blows up the entire it's like a palatial estate and yes. it appears that like everything blows up like the land everything <laughs> the end um this movie was some bullshit it was some bullshit I am shocked at how outrageously I'm not there's a whole market for that so I I, I think what's shocking is that Morgan, Morgan Freeman. Freeman's in it yeah yeah the, the, the trailer made me nervous but I thought mm-hmm. Morgan Freeman's not going to be in a movie that's this ridiculous but he sure in the hell is I I'm mean, convinced he shot all of his scenes in like four hours I'm sure he did yeah. because all he's doing is sitting in this wheelchair staring at a screen because he has this um like video mic setup where he's wearing like the Janet Jackson starter pack and then Victoria's wearing um, like a uh, like a GoPro on her chest so he's watching her that was, he sees through what she's seeing right yeah. yes he's seeing what she sees so he's just sitting in his wheelchair he probably has like like all his dialogue could have fit on one page mm-hmm. he repeats himself a lot mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's also 84, yeah. but it's just, you know, he's a, the other recent things we've seen him in are Coming to America and Barb and Star Go to Vista Del Mar, which seems to be, you but know... those were effective uses yeah, of his, yes, like, very, like, you know, his... Very distinct... Distinct, uh, popular um, voice, presence. Yes. Okay, I'm just going to run down my list really quickly. The intro to this film was long as hell. It was over six minutes uh, of... of newspaper headlines of a young Morgan Freeman talking about the hero cop, hero cop, the hero cop, the hero cop is wounded, the hero cop recovers. And really the only thing we get from this long ass intro is that he was shot and that's why he's in a wheelchair. (laughs) Yes. That's it. Um, I think, so Ruby Rose, I think is very attractive, but that... You know how like you see certain people and you wonder like why aren't you bigger mm-hmm. and then you see them in action it's like oh that's why because she doesn't seem to have any like um, charisma uniqueness nerve or talent um, I, I feel but I, Ruby Rose is, is having somebody that's that out there and that uh, queer uh, is refreshing uh, and the uh, rise of her career but yeah I, I think I've yet to see her in something where I'm like oh well. I skipped several seasons of Orange is the New Black, so I know she was on that. Uh, I don't. The know, Meg. But it's the Meg that I really know her from, which not her fault is a terrible movie. But her hair in that movie uh, actually overshadowed what was also a bad performance. What I was gonna say about Ruby Rose though was I think she looks like if um, the drag queens Rose and Got Mick had a baby. It would look like her. She, uh, she was also giving me sh- in this film Sinead O'Connor vibes. Yeah, she's beautiful. Hair. She's very yeah, she, good she is very beautiful. But again, uh, the and, and again, the script is terrible. But there's a mechanism used heavily that is very annoying to me, where Victoria's character has flashbacks to scenes that the audience saw like three minutes prior. Well, and it happens like five times. I think they do that because this film, in between her interaction with Morgan Freeman and the stops where she shoots people, is her driving to those stops. Um, and drive time, I wrote, equals flashback time. Uh, and I well, think that's a way to compensate for that. Oh my gosh. So that's my next note. The sort of like the motorcycle scenes combined with just Victoria in transit in general. Ugh. So, a lot of time is spent and the chase scenes are some of the worst I've seen. Well, Some of the worst. I think because they didn't have much of a budget, but they're, they're trying. But then they also, so the two main people who are chasing her, which I was very confused by because it's it's the one guy who's responsible for the death of her brother. I Is think, that the I one? she killed him. Oh, she killed no, she's talking about that. You're talking about that cop that had the dry hair. One of them's driving a Dodge Charger, and one of them is driving the Rolls Royce SUV. And that just seems like such an extravagant choice, which I'm sure hindered the chase scene because, like, they're not going to, you know, this $500,000 car, they're not going to... So I think it was very obvious that they were taking pains to just do, like... Like, they were obviously low speed... Because oftentimes the, lo- the chases are lower speed that they speed up. Mm-hmm. But even with it sped up, it looks like they were traveling very slowly. Really poorly done. No. Um, yes, and I really, really did not like the look of this film. It had this 
Like this, sepia. Well, I was trying to do this like jaundiced, uh, w- this world on a wire, everything's like sickly tone. Um, but the outsides match the insides quite often. There's, there's, no, there's almost no break for it except for, I think, when she goes to that gay bar and then it doesn't have that sickly green tone. But the, all the outside exterior nighttime sequences and then the interior ones where you have all the cops, uh, including who I believe is an FBI agent who also wants a piece of the pie. Muldoon. Patrick Muldoon um, from Starship Troopers in Melrose Place. Whose hair looks ridiculous because he has a little ponytail. He looks like a cross between Carrie Elwes and Walton Goggins. Oh. I was getting tired watching this, and if you squint, I could have seen either of those people. I was very concerned for Morgan Freeman early on because the first run Victoria makes when she like starts shooting, because Morgan, we, we keep flashing back and forth between what she's doing and then Morgan Freeman, Morgan Freeman's character's reaction to her. And the first time she kills someone, he's like, what the hell is that? And then he keeps saying it. He repeats himself a lot. Or, or he'd be film. like, you gotta get out of there. Yeah. Like, but then he said, like, you gotta get out of there. You gotta get out of there. I think the, be- <laughs> the, the, the best part, the best campy part to me was, I think it's after this second run. It's, it's after the second or third run. And she, she, Ruby Rose says, okay, I'm willing to play your game. You've been playing Bitch, the you've game. you've been done been playing this game. What are you talking about? Also, it drove me crazy that every, because we see her come back after each run. Yes. Which felt so tedious, which I'll get into. But every time she asks, when can I have my daughter back? Bitch, you will get your daughter back when you satisfy the rules we established in the beginning of this movie. Stop asking. Like, we already know. Well, and it, it, if you're going to do that where it's, a mechanism of you're it's like you're going through the several li- layers of hell or something like you're making to make an illusion it's like greek mythology or something then each of those needs to feel distinct well that's what i was going to say so yeah in most stories where we know that there's a sequence of events that must occur you you're you're like there's no way they're just going to run through it right there's always a twist or it's not sequential or something this film actually did it it really made us sit through the five runs, going and coming. Oh, no, actually, I take that back. The best part is when... So, uh, okay. So, the last stop, uh, she gets drugged. Actually, she gets drugged by the gay guy, right? That's the fourth stop. I no? thought he drugged her. Yeah, but that's not the last stop. Oh, no, it's not. But he drugs her, and then she's transported to the governor's office. No. Oh. The last stop is the union guy, and then she yes, runs okay. into a car, and that's when she wakes up in the governor's office. She wakes up in the governor's office, played by Julie Lott, who is married to George Gallo. Um, she also produced it. I like that her producer credit is Julia Lott Gallo, but as an actress, she's Julia Lott. Uh, she's she's the, playing Gretchen uh, Whitmer. She looks like Gretchen Whitmer. Um, mixed with, like, Kathleen Zellner. Yes, uh, <laughs> who is who's in on the gig and wants to um, uh, fleece... Uh, Victoria for herself and tries to offer her a deal and of course Victoria kills her but the, the scene that I was trying to get to but I had to mention that first the last stop shows up with Morgan Freeman in the cash and the scene with Gretchen Whitmer has us thinking that she hates uh, Damon and he says the money's all for you and she goes you have to come with us <laughs> so for the in- the entirety of the storyline, after she realized, you know, after she's presented with this, uh, you know, mission, she is very upset with Damon. She feels double crossed. She says, like, I thought you were the only person who cared about me. So she's mad, and she is saying, like, I'm gonna kill him when I'm done. And then, yeah, there's no. The writing is so bad because at the moment where she she real when she finds out that he was doing this for her, there is no switch in her emotion. There's no, no reaction. She's just like, like. As the audience, we know her character is about to kill him as soon as she gets her daughter, and then she's like, "Oh, you have to come with us." It's almost that like, was terrible. It's like the, one of those things where it's like, you feel stupid because you, you're supposed to know something you should know, so you don't have the reaction. Um, I, I want to the speaking to the look of the film. It was shot by Anastas and Mikos or Mishos, sorry, uh, who shot The Empty Man and The First Purge, among oh. many other things. Which which I did like both of those movies, and especially the look of those. Yeah. So I think this was a. Uh, uh, on purpose um, to me and I also wrote down this as a knockoff Walter Hill and not even great Walter Hill I'm talking about I couldn't help but think of uh, The Assignment starring also a, a queer female Michelle Rodriguez and uh, a notable elder Sigourney Weaver yeah. but at least that film ha- had some very entertaining bits to it even though yes it has some problematic things in it too but um, 
this just flatlines from start to finish, I think is the problem. That I, yeah. If, if you like, you know, so bad they're good films, you know, there's usually something in there. I'm just going to keep going down my notes. Damon's House is very interesting because it's very gaudy. It reminds me of Jimmy Jam's old house in Lake Minnetonka. It's just white on white like 80s version art deco it's a very inter or 90s version art deco it's very interesting we only particularly for how damon seems as a character inert um and that he can't get around but and... but the style of the house seems so like opposite of what this character would have sure yes. and uh, we're only really treated to one room <laughs> that's true in the house as well so who knows Okay, the second stop, well, after the, so the first stop, I thought uh, there's like a prostitute who asks Victoria to save her, who I thought looked like Kathy Ireland. Oh, <laughs> Kathy Ireland. But then the second stop, it's like another strip club, but now these people are black. And one of the gentlemen is a, like a very heavy man, and his character's name is uh, Billy Smalls, mm -hmm. which I thought was funny. But the way those characters were written and their reaction to her, because... After the first stop and her, Victoria, killing people, all these, like, nefarious people are calling each other, like, hey, watch out for this lady, because she's killing us up in here. So, these black guys get a call, and you can tell from the look on their face, they're like, oh, we need to do something. First of all, the editing in general of this film is... Not great. I that, mean, I could have edited it. But that scene in particular, is, the editing is particularly egregious. It is. And the, we keep seeing the characters looking at each other like, are you going to do something? And then finally, Victoria pulls out the gun. And that then was you have, so dumb. And then you have flashes to Morgan Freeman, who's in her ear, of course, saying, it's a trap! Like that lobster-headed thing in Return of the Jedi. After the third drop is when... Uh, the character from the first or drop like catches up with her and we think that she's been cornered because there are like three guys pointing guns at her and he's like I don't know whether I should kill you or hire you oh, yeah. and for some reason all the guys put down their guns and she tricks them by saying like oh because all of these people oh, yeah. know that Damon is watching them through the camera on Victoria's chest mm -hmm. so this guy's talking to her chest and she's like oh hold on let me turn on the camera. So she goes like this and she has her arm in her chest like like how you would grab a gun. And they're just talking to her and she pulls out a grenade and, and throws it at the guy. No, she pulls out a grenade and like quick hands it to him and he yeah. grabs it and he goes, ah! And then he just drops it and then they start running. And then, and then that was so you, bad. You get a, a to count to five before anything happens. Like, <laughs> Um... Again, the chase scenes are really, really poorly done. I think the most strange scene for me was her fourth drop with the gay guy, who I'm assuming owns like a bunch of gay bars. Mm -hmm. The way this character is played is just like, like, like it's 1995. Um, he drugs... Um, Victoria with something to like maybe like a honey. oh yeah he does drug her he okay. drugs her in with like her drink so she's like out of it and of course Damon's character has he's in her ear talking to her saying like don't pass out you know stay alert and he can see what's going on because of the camera and we see that there's a pile of cocaine so to counteract whatever sedative or hallucinogen this man drugged her with <laughs> Victoria grabs like a huge handful of cocaine and just throws it in her face. And then the graphics are like her pupils are electrified. And then now she's like, it's counteracted. Which I forgot about that scene with the pupil, um, <laughs> which maybe he's trying to do Luc Besson. I don't know what they're trying to do, but that was outrageous. outrageous. Then she is able, she's able to kill everyone like every other mission, drives back to the house again. And as she's talking to Damon, she has cocaine all over her face. <laughs> I just thought that was so ridiculous. Um, I just... Wow. I wanted to comment on the poster, too. Did you look at it? Mm -mm. Uh, it's her uh, with a bunch of uh, guns and rifles that are shaped to look like wings. Oh, because she's freed. Uh, but it reminded me of... Um, 
the Proud Mary poster with Taraji. Ugh. Which, the only good thing about that movie is the poster where her afro is made out of the guns. But when I saw that poster, I was so excited for that movie, by the way, and that was... This is not a good movie at all. The storytelling is terrible. The writing's terrible. But I'm... Con this could have been interesting, but what really doesn't work for me is I don't understand Victoria's character was doing fine. She was under the radar, no one was bothering her. And if Damon cared so much for her, why wouldn't he just be like, let me sign you up for Obamacare. Let me buy you a little place in Puerto Vallarta. Yeah, he's got money. Just, he has a lot of money. You can just go do better with your daughter. And then Damon says he's tired of what he's doing. And he ends up killing himself anyway. Well, and it, it also to get vengeance on people that have wronged her. But the, okay, yes, but then it's like, how did he know she was gonna kill everyone? That's true, too. So you and put her in jeopardy and with she, this little girl in your house. Because the little girl, the, the daughter, is still in the house. She was never taken anywhere. She's like... And the little girl seems happy because when... Obvious. But, yeah, when Victoria comes back, the girl's like in the indoor swimming pool having a gay old time. So I'm just confused. Like, <laughs> the thought process for Damon's character as to why he thought this would be a good plan to get out of the game. He could have just killed himself. Because also, I don't get the sense that... The corruption that we saw, he's trying to stop, and certainly his actions aren't going to stop it. No. It just you said didn't. that this was like <coughs> this was written in twenty or like they tried to make this in twenty fourteen. No, I read that the script has been floating around by oh. Samuel Bartlett in twenty fourteen and it won some award actually at some other thing according to IMDB. Uh mm. Maybe tastes and styles have changed since then. I don't know. Uh, it just, this just feels like a, a, a cheapy little action film that has some notable people. They got to be in it. And, you know, it, it, Ruby Rose, for whatever reason, has been doing kind of a string of these. Uh, she had another film that came out just... Uh, what month is it? Earlier in March. Uh, SAS something or other. Um, okay. The, you know, so... And then... Uh, the Doorman with Jean Reno. Uh, so so clearly she, there's a market for her and an audience for this. So maybe, you know, they those people will like this film. What would you give this film? 0.5 out of 5. Like it's, I find it very difficult to sit through. Um, I was amused because it is, it's not so bad it's good, but it's bad enough that it was fun, like making fun of it while we were watching it. Yeah, it's but yeah. You, you need to make fun of watching it. I think the only, if you know you're going to be talking about or reviewing it, then of course, the, you know, there are notes to take about terrible moments. But I guess I would give it, I, give, I guess I'd give it 0. 0.5 out of 5. You can go higher if you want. I just... It does, it's not a good movie. It doesn't matter what I give it. It's not sure. a good movie. Um, a side note, someone asked what my, the tattoo on my arm is. So I don't know what they're talking about, except my to-do list. Mm -hmm. I hope that's visible. Or I have like important dates, mm -hmm. or I have Janet Jackson's Rhythm Nation, like affiliated tattoo. Mm -hmm. And that, or the it's a Saint Kofi symbol for something that I don't really know. But Janet Jackson has the same tattoo on the same uh, arm. So there you go. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else? No. All right. Bye. bye.